All right, and welcome everyone to tonight's episode of uh, Negative Two Presents Curse of Strahd. Are you guys excited to be back after our spooky <laughs> Halloween rerun? <laughs> I'm going to die. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Um, anyways, as we always do, let me talk about uh, just take a few moments to talk about the folks that make it possible for us to stream this every week. Of course, starting with the team at Foundry, who creates the virtual tabletop platform that we used to play on. Foundry is a immensely powerful virtual tabletop tool. It is the best that I have personally ever used. I know Chuck uses it as well for his games. Absolutely could not play this as well as we do without the support of the mod community there and all the awesome things those guys are doing. Uh, of course, a lot of the audio for tonight's episode and uh, for many of our episodes is brought to you by uh, Tabletop Audio. Uh, they are a, the premier user-supported tabletop or uh, ambient audio system for your tabletop role-playing games. Check them out. You can download the tracks for free. You can sign up for the Patreon for exclusive alternate versions, which I recommend because they're very, very good. Or... You can stream them to your players or stream them in your home games. They have sound boards that you can set up. There's a ton of really cool stuff you can do. Go to tabletopaudio.com. Of course, our stream tonight is officially sponsored by the folks at Forge. Foundry is fantastic. The only downside is the no server. So I could not play this game internationally with all my friends here uh, if we did not have the power of the Forge servers behind us. Forge has servers in over 200 locations around the world to make sure that your players get the absolute best experience uh they've got a couple of very very affordable tiers uh to their platform including their with the one that we're on which is their world builder tier eleven dollars and 66 cents a month if you sign up for forge you get the first 14 days it's a 14 day free trial i highly recommend it they've got a ton of storage options as well as all kinds of things even their bazaar takes that already killer foundry mod community and even adds more to it i know i think Colin has some stuff up on the the Forge Bazaar and has stuff on the Foundry. We're having found, uh, Colin from Family uh, Family Fantasy RPG. <laughs> Sorry, I don't know why that trips me up every time. That's you, yeah, right. You got stuff up on Forge or the Foundry Workshop, the Bazaar. The Bazaar is Foundry, Foundry, Foundry yeah. yeah, which you can I think get through Forge. So um, again. Absolutely killer platform. If you guys are looking to play your own virtual tabletop games using Forge or Foundry, just hit us up on Discord. Hit me up on Twitter. I will tell you all about how wonderful it is and how to take uh, the best advantage of it. And of course, they are awesome folks over there and continuing to create a ton of new enhancements. So big shout out to our sponsor, Forge, for the evening. Um, with that, uh, we've got, of course, dice to give away tonight. Our November dice are our Quailin Kazoo dice from our Tuesday night Whoa. game. <laughs> and there they are those look those nice. beautiful beautiful quailin dice um okay. primarily they're mark one dice let's not get ourselves they're mostly mark one <laughs> with just a tiny little extra quailin d6 in there Two thousand elf eggs down below to enter that giveaway and we will doing that running that all month um yeah and i think that's it ryan uh not quite oh, wait. almost oh wait yeah yeah uh, we're giving away Steam game uh, like we do every single stream. Uh, uh, Jay forgets that fact every single stream as well. So, you know, I think that's, that's, that's probably uh, one for one every single time. Uh, but we're giving away. Uh, what's today's uh, Steam game, uh, Ben? Uh, tonight we're giving away Deployment. Uh, it's a really frantic looking top down shooter, uh, very neon color aesthetic. Um, there's actually a link up in the Discord if anybody wants to take a look. Uh, and to get to our Discord, uh, down in the panels below, uh, we have links for everything. Uh, but uh, we'll be giving that away tonight. It's only 300 elf eggs, so with the price of a follow, uh, you have enough uh, channel points to go ahead and enter the Steam game, and we'll do the drawing at the end of the stream. And that's all I got. I really forget it every week. Like every week? No, I just, like to leave. I just like to hear you do it. <laughs> That was oh, all. I don't sweet. actually forget it. It's just so you, and, you and Ben's thing. It lets me take well, a break. Anyways, well, thank you for not um, are you guys ready to? <laughs> you guys ready to get killed here? I mean, yeah, I'm ready to die. <laughs> totally. One must die. And so, as we dive back into the shadowy lands of Barovia, you 
investigated your way through this strange house, this creepy mansion somewhere in the streets of Barovia in pursuit of these two children who you believe to at this point be deceased as you found the corpses of them lying dead and severely decayed in an attic locked away. Making your way further through the house, you found your way to the basement, this dank, dark, earthy hole somewhere deep beneath the house. Fighting your way through the tunnels, you made your way to a strange altar in a pool of stagnant water. Where, as you approached this strange altar, these ghastly figures began to appear all around you. These ghostly forms, these long dead cultists, all chanting at once, one must die. So as the spectral figures begin to take shape all around you, they appear next to you, Ash, 13 total all around the room, one after another, chanting in the darkness. I'm sorry, did you say 13? Mm-hmm. That's a lot. That's an unlucky mm-hmm. number. Ends. They seem they seem to focus on you, chanting, permeating through the room, almost shaking the walls. One must die. One must die. Well, you're certainly putting me on the spot. Um. Anybody have a pet? No? Did you say a pen? Pet? Oh, pet? okay. Okay. Like a like a small rat or something to that effect? Um He starts like feeling along his coat, like looking for something. He looks at the he looks over at the altar. Is there anything is there any like what's on the is there anything on the altar? Make an investigation check. We'll call that a twenty-one. Yeah, yeah just there is. You're, you were you were smart enough, given the spectral forms surrounding you. They just seem to be focused on the altar and the chant. One must die. One must die. Looking at the altar, you see the dried blood all over the stone, um, caking the top of this this grotesque altar in the middle of this room it's fairly obvious to you what they're looking for and what's being asked of you you don't see anything else that would make a suitable sacrifice other than the people around you let me check something real quick I don't know if anyone's are eager to comply with your requests. So just, just chill out, all right? Well, hold on, hold on. I have an idea. Are you going to kill you... someone? No. Maybe. I don't know yet. We'll see. Uh, He's going to go down and uh, pull out a small bell and dip it into the water and then run it over the top of some of the blood to see if it starts to make it potentially a little bit more a little less stiff and a little bit more how do I put this not not necessarily like if I rub something on it it would it would get that nice red color on it if I could dirty it by rubbing it on the blood trying to deceive the ghost sure (laughs) Sure, yeah yeah Yeah, make a perception check wait no (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> or performance. It's the same thing. <laughs> That's an 11. 
You muted. As you scrub this this dirty, muddy water on the, or or just try to dribble it on the top of the altar, some of the, some of the blood does free and begins to sort of mush around, um, mixed with 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 dirt and mud. But the chant continues. One he looks die. around. And he says, "See, I'm dying. I'm dying. Something. See? No, it's not working. Okay. Um. Hmm." Oh, I get it. It's I get the joke. I get it. It's less of a joke and more of an attempt to not die here or have to kill one of the three of you. So no, that ain't gonna happen, brother. Mm-hmm. Mm. Hmm. Hey. Hmm. He steps down off of the altar into the water. As you take the step off the altar, the ghosts shimmer and shake, the room seeming to emanate with this violent energy. You can see the spectral forms begin to twitch, writhing as that chance stops suddenly. Come then, Lorgoth the Decayer, and feast upon their unworthy flesh. Uh, who now? Corner of the room. <laughs> you see the that pile of refu refuse begin to shake. Cole, right behind you, as you as you back up suddenly, the water reverberating and rippling throughout the chamber. As this mass of refuse and bone, decayed flesh begins to rise out of its surface. It pulls itself up slowly on two massive pods. You can only describe his arms. Let's go ahead and roll initiative. <laughs> oh boy, okay. Okay, we got this, right? We got this. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> we got this. Mm -hmm. totally. We can do it. I'm feeling confident, yeah. Absolutely. Uh-huh, yeah, definitely going last on uh, in this initiative. Like Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> this is gonna be a night, guys. I can feel it in my bones. <laughs> I mean, you had to start it off with that grade twenty-one. So, Ash, as you watch as this pile of flesh and bone and this monstrosity pulls itself out of the shadows, those spectral forms just dissipate into the walls again. What are you doing, Ash? Who had his uh, an arrow knocked after they had transitioned into this wide room? Just goes. Fuck, and shoots off an arrow. Um. That is a 17. Oh, wait. Yep, yeah, 17. 17 will hit. Go ahead and roll damage. Or four damage. All right, four points of piercing damage. You immediately, nice. just out of instinct, knock an arrow and fire it into the darkness. It slams into the creature and just like sloshes through this this mass of just moss and refuse and in flesh. Um, does not seem does not seem faced. Like I said, fuck. Uh, uh, and that'll end my turn. Right. With that, Cole. All right. Um. Oh, it's gonna be cool. So I'm gonna walk up, uh, right up. Um, I always try to use the wrong window here. Uh, the game is paused, so I cannot move. Recording in progress. Oh, that's nice too. Hi there. Alright, move move right up. 
and uh, I got my mice in hand, and um, I I'm gonna just try to start battling through uh, Ivani mess, I'm trying to get to some sort of like solid set of mass, um, and uh, just swing for an attack. Okay. Uh, where is my morning star? There we go. Oh, it's not bad. That's a 23. Nice. 23 will hit. All right, I'm going to do that. Slog through yeah. the, uh, the the murky water and, and shuffle up to the creature. You pull that mace out and, and swing at the, the pile of flesh. Uh, and I'm going to dump my first ever Divine Smite into it. Welcome to the club, man. It's <laughs> a good feeling. <laughs> Uh, so when you hit a creature with a melee weapon, you can expend one spell slot to deal radiant damage to that target. That extra damage is 2d8. Okay. Uh, uh, first one, that was eight extra points of damage. You rolled damage on the first strike? Oh, I did not. So eight, eight points of damage. I got excited about the, the Divine Smite. I forgot to... <laughs> I, I noticed. That's all right. All right, so it's um, uh, eight damage and eight damage, so sixteen damage in total. Alrighty. So sixteen damage as the mace carves through this this murky flesh, and just chunks of it just go flying. Although it just reforms and almost sloshes over itself uh, as that as those chunks fly out. Uh, a bit of bone and a broken skull sort of fall out and plop down into the water as you do that. It just continues to shamble its way up. Um, and as a bonus action, I'm going to cast uh, Shield of Fife uh, on myself. All right. And uh, as, as I do it, it's uh, I smack my mice against my shield and you, you see it ripple out on the shield and uh, eventually ripple out across the entirety of me body. All right, as that, that slight glimmer seems to surround you and almost it, it, it illuminate um, for, for a moment as you're standing in this dark, murky hall. You, you, that, that shimmer, that shield embraces you and you feel emboldened in the darkness. You, I think you muted yourself halfway through somehow. <laughs> I don't know how. <laughs> um, anyways. Shield of Faith. Next up, Lorgoth the Decayer. Uh, this yeah. massive form uh, approaches you, uh, Cole, as you as you stand before it, and it just it just slams down these these giant fist like appendages. Uh, the first one going to be a oh my That's god are you kidding me yeah I guess that fucking hits I'll eat <laughs> oh my god I'm so sorry no you're not just play the game <laughs> smack it me Jesus Jesus <laughs> Jesus <laughs> 19 points of damage as this 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 giant hand smashes down Cole you are you are almost engulfed and swallowed by it actually so why don't we actually why don't we do that why don't you have why don't you make a strength saving throw for me sure sure glad to do it DM a constitution, of constitution I'm sorry call even better uh saving throw yes Big money, big money, big money. Ah, uh, natural twenty. What are the nice. odds? Right, so, <laughs> so you hold up your you hold up your shield as, you, as it starts to sort of flow around you, and this this form just uh, almost gelatin as it sloshes down on top of you. You managed to push away at the last moment, but you were flung backwards. The the hit itself just uh, crushing some of your armor against your skin and your flesh as you are knocked down and into the water and it's you, you splash around a bit before picking yourself back up suddenly and just you, you have the nin, the wind just completely knocked out of you <laughs> why does this just say ben character <laughs> <laughs>
Well, it also just says Ryan character too, and Radio J. I'm the only one with a character name in in Foundry. Uh, well, I don't oh, know why it's doing that. Um, all right, Durango. Uh, so Durango, seeing Cole go down for for a moment there, uh, gets getting pretty messed up. He points his loot and plays an ominous riff and bends the last note very dramatically as he bares his teeth at this uh, at this monstrosity, uh, casting hex. I'm going okay. to uh, going to give it disadvantage on its uh, ability checks using strength. Nice. At least probably a good call. Okay, and so as that, you... yeah, go ahead. I was gonna say as that note hangs in the air, he blasts back into to a frantic series of, of like sweep picks and uh, hits it with an eldritch blast. As a fifteen hit. Uh, 15 just hits. Yep. <laughs> nice! So that's 14 plus the 1d6 from the hex. Good. Fantastic. 18 altogether. Oh my god. <laughs> right. Uh, so is that, that, that musical chord strikes and that magic that you weave into it, that dark energy that you weave into that that sound as it as it passes through the tunnel, sort of wraps around it, and you can see this this dark, malevolent, almost energy just just push down on this creature. Um, and as it does, that bolt flies out and follows it behind, just leveling, pushing it back. As it's, it's, it's some of it had kind of sloshed over on top of you, Cole. It was now, it now pulls itself back in this this quick jerk of emotion as this this blast smashes into it. that we are at 10 uh, is the water considered a uh, difficult terrain uh, it is uh, not high enough so we'll say no okay cool if that's the case then we are going to step in beside our friend here and then we will attack with the rapier does an 18 hit an 18 hits go ahead and roll damage there's damage and then sneak attack is hey max damage 11 points of sneak of uh rip here damage and at second level it's 1d6 five more Very points nice. of damage uh and then we will bonus action uh disengage and step back up onto the platform and that'll be my turn all right. Did you roll the actual rapier damage? Yeah, it's 11. And then 1d8 you plus attack three. Just the 1d6, right? Yep. Okay. I got you. 16 points All right, of damage. Yeah. Yeah, so you dart in, you dart in with with quick lightning speed around Cole as in in, in in jab your rapier, and it just easily passes through some of that flesh in the golem. You can watch as bits of it uh, sort of spew out of these holes that you create as you quickly dart in before backing up to the DS. Ash. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and move up to here. Right next to Tenzveta. Uh, and I'm going to pull a little vial out of one of the pouches at my belt. And I'm going to toss a vial of acid at this thing. Uh, just want me to roll a longbow for that. Yeah, just make a ranged attack. You're throwing acid? Yeah. Natural 20. Oh my god, they're <laughs> flying tonight. Okay. For a 27. <laughs> These dice are spicy tonight, yeah. Okay, uh, go, do me a favor and uh, roll uh, roll 46. Very opposite ends. Right. Two fours and two ones. <laughs> yep, so uh, as you as you toss this vial into the air, it it cracks on the creature, and as it does that, acid just splashes across it. The flesh begins to smoke and bubble and boil underneath as it it rides around in agony um, before before you know the you know again the, the bits of, of muck and and meat just begin to kind of 
pile back over the the burning flesh and it just it's this sort of continuous cycle of just burning and trying to regenerate almost or, or re reform itself uh as it just just sh quakes in this spot that on your turn i'm gonna burn my action action surge okay and immediately knock an arrow and try to smoke it in that spot that's trying to heal up right now 21 21 hits go ahead and roll damage i was real close to that natural 20. <laughs> yeah <laughs> uh six damage six points of damage is that arrow it just again passes through the through the creature and with it it, it creates another hole as it does it starts to reform but burn at the same time and that'll end my turn you poke it close up i'll poke it from back here mm -hmm. with that coal still reeling from that last blow just barely catching your breath Um, what are you doing, buddy? Uh, that's that, <laughs> that, that, um, <laughs> I'm going to, uh, let's see. So shield of faith is that's concentration. That's concentration. Well, um, um, you, you say in, uh, the palm of a cow's, uh, shield end, uh, sort of a, um, I got a radiant light forming on the palm, and uh, I touch myself in the chest, and I'm gonna cast uh, Cure Wounds. All right, that divine light emanating from your hand again as you smash it against your chest. Very oh, nice that's, roll there for eleven points healing. of healing. You feel some of the your your ribs begin to pop and crack in your own chest as you are just Ooh. able to catch your breath again. Um, do I move away? I take the attack. I'm getting, I'm getting attacked either way. If I stay here, I'm only get attacked once. So I'll I'll stay here. I uh, know, uh, just Bryce, Bryce for impact. Yeah, as the creature it just pulls its whole form back up, bits of it still smoking and burning, slopping off into the water, splashing into the muck around you. It pulls those two appendages up again and brings them down for another massive hit. If I can get it open. There we go. <laughs> oh, I'm somebody. So many problems tonight. That's 12. Uh, I won't hit my. Um, if that's a strength based attack, he'll be doing them at disadvantage. I don't know if that's applicable, but. I believe Hex is only on checks. Yeah, it's I think it's only on right, yeah. ability checks. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. okay. No, my bad. So that would, that would be applicable on things like grappling. Yeah, yeah. That kind of stuff. Which it will then try to do is that. <laughs> Again, the, the, the form sloshes over you. It, it, it tends to engulf you and, and sort of suck you into its form as it does. So um, go ahead and make a... Well, I'm just, I'll have you make a constitution save with advantage. Okay. Okay. Uh, saving throw. Advantage, please. Oh, hey. that's a 21. Yeah, so you, again, you manage to push that form out of the way, holding that your your shield arm steady now, that, that divine energy coursing through you uh, as you as you hold, manage to hold your ground uh, from from this assault. With that, we have Durango. And Durango uh, just keeps playing and keeps on blasting. <laughs> he understood the assignment. <laughs> uh, 16 hits. 16 hits. Go ahead and roll damage. It's uh, 14 <laughs> plus, plus five, 19 altogether. The right go for a skip. Points, yeah. Everybody Spice plays me nice. rolling great on the damage tonight. 
I'm waiting to see him blow some brains. <laughs> yeah, and you say, I mean, he is, he is, and it's, and it's an odd thing for you, Tenzvedek, because you've never seen, you've seen a few bards in your day, but you've never seen them weave this sort of spell. And it, and it almost doesn't look like the loot has anything to do with it. It's just almost how he's channeling that energy at the, at the moment. He's playing and casting at the same time, and he's just using that loot. And it's in the, 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 the it is, uh, like a focal point for him is that the magic just blasts out of the the top the hmm. tip of the the head of the the instrument, slamming again into the creature as it reels back and the whole chamber shakes as it bangs against the back wall. Bits of dirt begin dropping and falling from the ceiling as it splashes in the water around you. And Sveta, I'm gonna do it again. <laughs> <laughs> It ain't broke, don't fix it. Wow. 19 on the die for 24. Spicy, 19, spicy. 24 hits, yeah. Uh, damage is a 7 plus sneak attack is 6. <laughs> 13 points of damage and disen uh, disengages bonus action. Run back. Yeah, so you dart dart back off the DS into the water just racing across this this ankle ankle high water as you ting, 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 just just dive in with those rapier shots one after another poking those holes again and then backing up before the the form can, can um, engulf you and fall on top of you Jay Ash <laughs> seriously okay, now throw some more acid now <laughs> I, I just had the one Oh. You're yeah, yeah. You're making me tired with all this running. By the way, just do it this way. And I'm gonna shoot the, <laughs> the bow again. <laughs> Two for a nine. Just like finally, it just like that. <laughs> but just like we rehearsed it. Yeah, sort of distracted by ten, sort of bouncing in and out of your shot. You you, you attempt to fire, and the the creature is, is reeled back against the wall. Just very quickly begins to pull itself down as the arrow slams into the dirt behind it. This is your fault. You did this. I'm just used to it. And yeah, the, the uh, bonus action actually, I'm going to use my uh, second wind. Or seven points of healing, or nine points of healing, rather. Yeah, so a little, a little distraught over that miss. You take a deep breath, refocus, and begin to line up your next shot. And as you do, you, you feel some of that vigor and vitality return to you. Cole. Um, again, quite can't quite move. Uh, I'm gonna use my my last spell slot, and. Uh, do one more cure wounds. Not as good. Six. Six points of healing. All right. You still, you feel that divine energy coursing through your body again, you know, healing your wounds. That's fatigue leaving you as you're catching your breath. You've emboldened by your shield of faith as you stare down this creature, shield in one hand, mace in the other. And uh, just uh, in, in posturing, I'm going to try to make sure that uh, my shield's held in a way that Tenzveta can come up and uh, uh, make it up easy enough up and underneath it. Got it. So just standing stalwart against the tide of, of liquid flesh and bone that, that is rised above you. Uh, as it again comes for another big attack against you. That is a 14. That's a miss, bruv. <laughs> Go ahead and make me a constitution saving throw with advantage. Oh, that's not great. 11. Let me just see this real quick. Okay. 
Yeah. Uh, so this Got time, me. though, even though even though it misses, it it just it, that form just wraps around you, and you were you were almost pulled inside of it. Now you, your eyes go wide as you were sucked into this darkness, this void of just liquid pulsing mass. <laughs> Um, for the moment, you are blinded and restrained and unable to breathe. Bad Throw some acid. Choke. You begin to choke inside this this golem of decay. And with that, we will go to Durango. You watch Cole. You watch as Cole is just swallowed whole by the, this massive fleshy form. Durango's uh, eyes go wide with horror, like his, his pupilless golden rod colored eyes just huge in his face as he uh, maintains his composure and keeps playing, uh, leveling his loot for another shot. It's a 21 to hit. Mm -hmm. it's a 5 plus 2 for damage, not so spicy, 7 altogether. Yeah, so now, you know, your friend being being pulled inside, you try to adjust your shot uh, to not hit anywhere you believe he might have been sucked into as you try to go wide and catch somewhere in the side of the creature. It pings off, and it still does damage. A big chunk of it slaps against the wall behind it as the blast s smashes into it. Bits of bone and uh, break off and shatter all around it, but uh, it, still, it still has coal. Feta. Watch it. And he's going to do it again. <laughs> Gotta love level two characters. It's great. It's wonderful. Uh, I don't think a 10 hits. A 10 does not hit. Uh oh, boys. So, same thing here. You dart in and try to go around where you think Cole is going to be, but unfortunately, you just can't. You just can't quite find the. Uh, a, a good spot, and as you as you, as you think you have one, uh, one of those fleshy arms just shifts, and in, in, in a moment of panic, you pull away. Uh, again, disengage. That's my turn. All right, Ash. Uh, oh shit! Uh, he got aided. Um, yes. And just lets off another arrow. Uh, Twenty-one to hit. Twenty-one hits. Go ahead and roll damage. Nice. Nine damage. Nine points this time. That arrow. Uh, not not as afraid for for Cole. Maybe you you in, in taking that breath of time before you focus your shot and you fire into what what looks to be this creature's face. This strange maw in this fly this fleshy mound. Uh, as the arrow smashes into it and just rips through, you watch more chunks of this this flesh and refuse just spew against the back wall. It, it takes a moment, you see, a little bit slower to pull its form back together now as it, it just continues to lumber forward. Uh, I'm going to take my movement and just kind of move off to the side at an angle just a little. And that'll end my turn. All right. Cole, you are restrained, blinded, and you every every breath strangled. You cannot catch your breath as you are being squeezed to death inside of this creature. Um trying my best. I'm going to try to um get my uh shield and my mace and, and sort of wedge them. So it, it kind of pries open an opening. I want to try to um, struggle my way out. Okay, go ahead and make a, uh, a strength saving throw. I'm with advantage. It is hexed, so I'll give it to you. 18. 18, yeah. Uh, so as you, you begin to flail and struggle, you're holding onto your shield and trying to just wiggle and just create some sort of opening in this creature. The inside of it so much tougher than the outside that it's not not nearly as, as liquid although you can feel its strength waning as you you dig and you feel and you feel a bit of the air on your skin and it, just that bit of reprieve you pull and yank and you're able to pull yourself outside of it that is your action though uh, uh, i'll be staying right there um uh, yeah now, now covered in uh, like ichor 
and just shake myself off and try my best to still look cool and get into like a nice <laughs> <laughs> yeah as this yeah. thing just births coal out back into the, the muddy water <laughs> very much looks like, like the ice ventura ri uh, rhino scene just <laughs> I knew somebody was going to go there. Uh, and as you, just as you manage to catch your breath, the creature rears up again for another strike. A 26 hit. Yeah, yeah, that, I guess so. A positive. It's not a crit. True. <laughs> Don't matter much, bro. points of damage. As you just managed to pull yourself out and those two fists just slam down again. This time catching the shield and you feel your arm give way underneath as it slams into your chest and pushes you down into the water again. Your legs your your legs ache and you can feel you can feel all that pressure and that strain on you as it pushes you against the ground. Is he going for the grapple again? No, no. Oh, okay, uh, good. Durango. Uh, seeing Cole reemerge, uh, Durango feels feels bolstered, inspired, and as he as he strums, he begins to vocalize uh, with his instrument, and his his voice is like pretty pretty badass singing voice, you know. You didn't really expect that out of out of this character, but uh, even even in this like watery, poorly um, poor poor acoustics environment, he, he still really makes it work. Um, I'm gonna use. Uh, What's it called here? Borrowed talent and re-roll that. Okay. Because that was that was not what I was going for there. There's too much buildup mm -hmm. to roll a ten. Uh, Seventeen hits. All right. So as you hear the words come out and begin to reverberate around this chamber, as he begins to to channel even more of his voice into this 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 magic that he's casting and intends you you witness this again kind of looking over because it's, it's a strange combination to you it takes on this almost un unearthly timber and tone as if not coming from a, a person but not not too dissimilar from that spectral voice echoing around the chamber as another blast fires it slams into the creature go ahead and roll damage It's uh, 9 into 2, 11 total. 11. Yeah, so similar here, you, the, the blast, just even more of it just gets splashed across the walls and begins dripping down. The smell of rot and decay permeates the chamber. It, it, you choke on it for a moment, taking big breaths to, to, to cast these spells. The, the creature is slowly reforming itself, and it looks like it is just barely holding its form together. Do I think I can hide behind the altar? Uh, it would be. I mean, you're you're relatively small for an elf, right? Yeah. I want to say yeah, I was only like five something. Okay, I'm gonna bonus action hide. Okay. Oh come on. Forget it. We're just gonna shoot him with the hand crossbow anyway. But no resource specified. I'm gonna attack with it anyway. Uh, well, hold on. No, I'm not. Apparently, details. Hmm. Let's see. Oh, there you go. Let's try that again. Did you get it? Yep. Fourteen hit. Uh, a fourteen does not hit. Dang. Okay. He just kind of ducks down, like distracted by the the weird reverberations. Ducks down. He looks over. He says, "The fuck are you doing?" And he lets loose his his, his bolt without even looking. He just looks around the corner and just <laughs> lets it go around the corner of the altar. And... <laughs> That's his turn. Yeah, and as the the arrow flies, the the creature in a last in a it just a, a like it throws, it slams its hand sideways, and the arrow just gets knocked knocked into the water. Um, Ash is going to do what he's good at, and let's lose another arrow. 
for an 18. And nine more points of damage. Nine more points, yep. So as this, you, you, you take another deep breath, ankle deep in this, this stagnant water as you draw that arrow back and release. It flies through, and as it smashes in, and you can watch as the entire form begins to crumble as the arrow pierces through it. Just all the flesh and bone just dropping and sloshing off. For a moment, it just stands there, this mountain of decayed mass before it crumbles and falls into the water. Cole uh, collapses down to one knee. <laughs> kind of holding himself up with his mice, his morning star. Durango uh, walks along the uh, the elevated position there and down the stairs. Or maybe he doesn't. I don't seem to have control of my token. Are we paused? It's because we're still in combat. Oh, still in combat. There you go. There you go. <laughs> he kneels down and offers Cole a hand, tries to get him back up on his feet. Yeah, I, you know, grab on and. You know, push himself off, and, and as soon as he gets stable, um, you, you'll see, um, and again, in his shield hand, a little bit of a glimmer in his hand, and um, uh, cast Lay on Irons on myself for four points of healing. I'm assuming he's good. Uh, good's a relative term. <laughs> <laughs> takes more Those than a pile are. of filth to fell the mighty sort of coal. And as he's saying that, he's snapping his fingers at Cole, casting Prestidigitation, cleaning him up, trying to shine up his, his armor and his shield to get the muck off, <laughs> make him look more more presentable. Hey, uh, thanks for taking the ass whipping for the rest of us, friend. Uh, I think the rest of you could uh, uh, like it. Uh, you know, no offense. None taken. He's going to continue to, like, dig around the altar. <laughs> A little taken. Tens, as you, you, you go to, your, your eyes immediately are drawn to the altar. But too quickly you realize that the, the water that you're, everyone is standing in is still reverberating. A slight ripple that just seems to be shaking. And as you look up, the ceiling is still sort of dripping and bits of it are falling down. This, this raw earth is crumbling down around you. The entire house seems to be shaking at this point. Boys, I think it's time we leave. I, I have felt this way since we came in. Me too, but that's beside the point. Yeah, let, let's get out of here. <laughs> Start hooking Cole, it. can you move? Uh, I, I, I'll be able to make it out, mate. All right. Then let's go. And he's going to uh, go back the way that we came, which is through here. <laughs> and he's just going to retrace his steps. Start making his way back out. Um, as everybody else leaves the room, Durango's going to approach the dais and like using prestidigitation clean the blood off and see if there's any any writing or inscription or um uh what do you call them hieroglyphics like <laughs> yeah, make an investigation check informs um can i reckon a little bit as i'm running away can i look at the pile of monster that we just had and and mm -hmm. see if there's anything like clothes or anything that i Yep, yeah, make an investigation check. That was an 18. Yeah, as you as you attempt to press press to digitize the the blood off of it, you see that it it cleans off the top of the altar. There are depictions of these demonic creatures feasting on flesh and, and, and drinking blood um, and, and as you're looking at it the blood begins to just seep back up as if coming out of the stone itself and recovers the altar 
and then just begins to drip down the sides. Durango wastes no time uh, moving away from the altar and, and following everybody else. Uh, what did you get, Ash? Eight. Yeah, so as you stare at this pile of just bone and flesh and just decayed matter and just sort of permeating throughout the water and this shimmering, almost oil-like consistency, the, just the sight of it and the smell and everything just causes you to choke and, and nearly vomit. Uh, and there's just, yeah, you don't see anything. The, the quick look you take at it, there's nothing in there worth you standing in this any longer. Fuck this. And I'm going to skedaddle. You're muted. So you guys are just racing back the way you came, back up the stairs? I mean, unless there's another way that makes itself clear, yes. Okay. <laughs> yeah, just, just stand still so I can grab you. <laughs> <laughs> Curse said, of said, the demon, said, the, said, said the demon said the demon house <laughs> right <laughs> okay you race back up the stairs the house again in here just the walls themselves seem to be shaking bits of dirt are crumbling down oh shit I don't remember which way we came from well, if we, remember, Chuck does not. If we went the way we came, that means we go all the way up to the third floor. If it's shaking, it means it's collapsing, which means it'll be closer to the ground. I think we'll be okay. If you die, you die. I, I, I ain't dying, bruv. I told you already, I ain't dying. <laughs> I'm not dying. <laughs> I, can't, this, I can't do this accent today. Oh. <laughs> As you say that, the walls themselves, like dirt, begins to shuffle and, and, and collapse a little bit as a skeletal hand just plops out um, from one of the skeletons just kind of falling out of the loose dirt in the wall itself. And all around it... you, you see the bones start to... There are a lot of dead people here. <laughs> yeah. Can't imagine we're the first one to fall for that. Wait, wait. Wait, wasn't like everything locked upstairs? Like we couldn't like open windows. We didn't try breaking them though. That, that's fair. And if the building is collapsing, I don't particularly Wait, care go. to keep glass going. So. Ash pauses for a second and then is promptly just pushed forward by the rest of the group running through the hallway. Oh, yeah, yeah, you're not getting the option. <laughs> Scooby-Doo style, just like... <laughs> hey, I'm outside of the wall. There you go. Zoop. 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 Oh, the game is paused. You're uh -huh. muted. <laughs> no, I know. I, I can see it. Just give me a second. No. Um, <laughs> as you guys are, uh, you, you race up the stairs again and push through that secret door um, that you entered up and up and up, though the walls around you seem to almost be crawling. Uh, quickly, Tens, you see these, these insects crawling in and out between the, the boards themselves, the entire house almost undulating and pulsing as you, as you run up these stairs around you. Uh, you, you push through the door um, and you swear you see a bit of the wood almost give way like a wet rotten uh, behind the secret door is, is more and more of these, these creatures just like crawl in and out of it and these worms and maggots as you push open the door itself stepping into the room you see that the, the window now that looked outside on the other hand that had been boarded up and quickly your, your brain it, does a 180 and you spin around the room and you see the door that you had entered and you look at it very quick and you look at the other side where there was clearly a window 
There is no window. It is complete, completely bricked up. He's gonna. <laughs> um. Hmm. Fuckery. We ain't got no time. We gotta keep moving. If that's not the way, we gotta go downstairs. Yep. Yep. Unfortunately, my game is paused. Yeah, I know. So the second you take a step towards the door, mm -hmm. you, you stop for just a moment as you're kind of looking at the window and you look back at the door and these blades just come out of where the door was. And what is this house? I'm gonna. I'm going to. I'm gonna grab the closest piece of furniture and just shove it into the blades, trying to get it to catch. Sure. Make a. Um... No, I'll just give you that one. Why not? So you take. You take a. You, you pull a bit of the furniture off, and the the the, the, the wood underneath. You see these these insects begin to scatter underneath the the cloth that you pull off, but you. You manage to shove it in, you time it just right, and you shove it in the blades, going to catch on it. The wood's creaking and breaking underneath. You have a moment. Uh, Why don't we go ahead and... For fun. Oh, uh, yeah, for fun. We will once fun. again... Go in. There we go. Initiative order. He, as he does that, he's going to look over at Cole and just say... I think I rolled your initiative for you, Jay. I'm sorry. No, you're good. Sort of. It wasn't a great roll, but fine. Hey, are you, do you want to re-roll it? I think no, you can right -click I'll, I'll take it. it. That's fine. Okay. I'll take it he's as He's going to look over at, at Cole and just say, uh, break it with your shield. Uh, once it's my turn, maybe. Uh, Durango, there's a moment the blades are caught um, in the yeah, doorway. Dur like, but there's still enough room conceivably to squeeze through. It's not like totally obstructed. Yeah, you think so? Yeah, Durango wastes no time, uh, like just kind of not pushing past everybody, but just slipping between them, like like an eel, and then then leaping through the opening, like uh, like a, like an acrobat. You are muted, sir. <laughs> Use the 15 feet of your movement and you make it through the doorway. Okay. And uh, Drango just steps a little bit to the side to make room for the rest of them. Um, not really seeing a lot more he can do in the situation, <laughs> but he will stop. Yeah, you do notice as you, as you step out into the hallway that all the doors now, these... <laughs> These blades are just appearing in the where the doors were. Like there is no door anymore. It is just this this series of spinning blades. Uh, it is not any better on the other side, gentlemen. Oh. Um. I I guess if we're trying to go through these doors, I was gonna see if there was another way out of this room, but um. Yeah, uh, Durango's already there, so I'm gonna, yeah, try to wedge my, my shield, uh, sort of where the blades are coming out, and, and hopefully dislodge them, or, um, sort of get them jammed, maybe. Alright, so for the moment, the blades are already jammed. Oh, alright, uh, I'll just... I want you to break them. Uh, well, I don't want them to, uh, ruin my shield, um, yeah, I'm, I'm just gonna go through... All right. So you you dart through the uh, the doorway, you, you, you climbing up and around the the wedged blades. They continue to creak suspiciously and, and begin to like crunch on that furniture. Bits of it break off a little bit as you're trying to push as you make your way through and you jump to the other side. 
on the other side of the door, you can see or what Durango is talking about is the every other door in this room is just the series of uh, alternating spinning blades. Um, I'm just going to try and make room uh, for anyone coming through. Um, I, I, got, I, I, have, I have a torch on me. Can, can I, like, shove the torch in for, like, additional uh, jamming? For additional jammage. <laughs> um, Kevin and his got. Yeah, so I mean, how, what does that look like to you? So the the there's a piece of furniture there. The blades are caught on it. Um. So um. I, I'm looking for a way that um, if the chair fails, uh, I sort of wedge the torch uh, between uh between there as like an extra brace. You see, you've got like a like a scissor mechanism of blades, just trying to get it up and in between so it can't resume normal movement once it uh. Once the chair breaks. Okay, so you, so you jam this torch in there and attempt to uh, attempt to stop it even even further, so that it, it, I mean the torch itself isn't particularly sturdy. And it was the lit torch, or is this a, a dark torch? You're keeping one lit or no? Oh, uh, that's the lit one. Yeah, that's that's what I'm carrying. So you're just putting the lit one in there? Yep. Yes, sir. All right. So you you jam this you jam this torch into into the spot the the the, the fire, um, starting to uh, burn some of the wood, as as you do. So now it is a spinning blade trap, and the wood is catching fire. Oh. Good. Uh, Tanzveta, you're you're up. Hmm. <laughs> Um, I the, the, the wood getting weaker now as the blades are crushing it. The the bit a bit of fire catching on the this dried old decayed wood. Yeah, no, we're going through. Like we're gonna go through, <laughs> and we're gonna run around the corner as far as I can. Okay. So but, you're just uh, gonna continue. So you, again, you you try to just squeeze through mm -hmm. the blades. Yep. Go ahead and make a dexterity saving throw for me. Twenty-three. Twenty-three. Yeah. So you dart through, and just as you make it through, that 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 chair snaps and breaks, and bits of fire and ember go flying in the air as the, the blades just keep keep going. Well, fuck. Uh, sorry, Ash. <laughs> Uh, and we will go as far as we can uh, into the other room. Does that window on the other side exist, or did it get uh, bricked up too? Completely bricked up. Okay. I think we should try going through the walls, and that's my turn. Through the walls? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know how your armor is going to fit through 16s, but... <laughs> <laughs> all right ash as he witnesses cole start lighting everything on fire unintentionally and then the blades start going again he just <laughs> stares and goes oh you fucking what mate <laughs> you are <laughs> and it's going to look around the room for anything movable and metallic. Anything movable? Yeah, anything that I can, like a piece of furniture or something that has, like, m more substance to it than wood. Okay, make a perception check. I think I'm good at those. Uh, 13. Okay. As you uh, as you begin to look around the room, you start pulling these sheets off of the furniture. The furniture all underneath are chairs and tables, and uh, you find one small cabinet that you think is a little sturdier. Or at least it'll catch the blades easier. 
But nothing, nothing that's not wood. Um. All right, I'm gonna bring it over and sacrifice it to the the blades. All right, so as you jam, you jam this piece of furniture back in between the blades again, stopping them, they get, they get caught. Um, you're just attempting to, to rush through? Yeah. Okay. Uh, make a dexterity saving throw for me. Dex save. <laughs> uh, 21. 21, yeah. So as you... <laughs> you manage to push through pretty that. confident that they are caught but however just as you make it through that you watch that that bit of furniture just snap and break again as the, the blade just rips through it you are all out here the uh the doors all open in the house seem to be this series of spinning blades everywhere you look anywhere that there was a window now is just completely closed off, almost as if the architecture of the building itself has changed around you as it begins to shake and groan. Uh, yeah, I'm going to check the walls. This mode is... Uh, oh, well, is, if we're we, still we in the initiative. Durango. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> thought we were dropping out. My bad. Versus, versus, the, house, versus the house. I'm sorry. <laughs> Gentlemen, where do we go from here? Ah. Uh. Went there, dumb waiter. Yeah, the next floor down. Oh, there ain't one up here. I don't think so. No. Then down the way shall I go? Because it was on the, uh, if I remember correctly, it was on the east, almost northeast side of the house. Not quite. Um, so, guessing there's a there's a set of, of blades before me here. All right. Yeah. Drango's watch gonna every couple seconds. <laughs> Drango's gonna watch those blades and try and get his timing down as he takes a deep breath and uh, tries starts to leap through them. Uh, deck save. A dexterity save. Yeah. Yeah. Here we go, boys. Here we go. Come on, big bucks. Oh no! That's a ten. <laughs> It's not so hot. Eep. Oh my right, god. As you attempt to rush through, the blades catch you just as you're rushing through and they, they they manage to rip against your clothes and you feel those blades just pierce right through your right through your skin as you take thirteen points of slashing damage. God damn. Um <laughs> and but I don't make it through the door. Do I make it through the door? Yeah, you make it through the door. Fantastic. Stairway beyond. <laughs> That's a lot of damage. <laughs> I I cannot yes. take that. You will lose <laughs> coal tonight. Uh well I I think that was my one, so we're on the we're all in the same boat here, bud. <laughs> That's my turn. Through the wall. Through the wall. I mean I'm strong, but I'm only level two, buddy. I don't know how much oh, I mean, if it's just wood, it shouldn't be that bad. Especially I, if you're in armor running at full speed. The the house reorganized so that the windows were covered in brick. Yes, I know, but the interior walls may not be. I, I don't know how giving myself a concussion against the wall is going to help us in this situation. It could be fun. <laughs> you know, it's, it's Dungeons & Dragons. You can try it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> mm. Listen, we're dealing with fuckery. When you deal with fuckery... <laughs> You deal fuckery, you run your head against a wall. Okay, I guess that's... <laughs> who's, who's, who's fuckery turn? only begets more <laughs> fuckery. My turn. Um, <laughs> before I jump... Maybe the window... Maybe since the brick there is new... Maybe I can... Attack the hell out of it, push the bricks in or something. Okay. So you take your you take your mace and you're just gonna try to which window? Um that that one right I don't know if that's the wrong window, but yeah. The correct window, yeah, so but that, the wrong that, yeah, window. There was that was a door once upon a time, but it is now completely bricked over. 
Um, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna take the morning stall and just crack as hard as I can and just over and over into it. Go ahead and make an attack. Uh, Fight in the house. Beat the shit out of it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um... 15. 15, yeah, as you bash and bash and bash, just, the brick isn't even marked by your mace as it scrapes across it. Uh, would you say, uh, well, uh, the only way is through the, the blade door. Would it be an action for me to try to jump through the door? Uh, let's say yes. So you can you can get up and, and just try to get your timing. Yeah, that's what I'll do. Okay. All right, it's better. All right. I have a hammer in my. The wall. I, I think I have a hammer and I have a crowbar. Okay. The problem is <laughs> that I'm very low strength. Um. So I. Yeah, no, we're going to try and break through the interior wall right here. Right here by the door. Right there? Sure. Mm -hmm. uh, go ahead and um, uh, go ahead and make an attack roll with just not, you know, with your strength modifier. So just roll a d20. So d20 plus two. Correct. Correct. Fourteen. All right, fourteen. Um, so, uh, roll the damage would be a 1d4 plus 2. That sound, sound, that sound like it works for you? Sure, I'll take it. Okay. <laughs> How about four points of damage to this wall as he comes up with this crowbar and just... <clears throat> there you go. Yeah, as you start to, you start to rip through the wall, it actually is coming apart pretty easily. Like, it's, it's almost like rotten and decayed as you begin to pull on it, these these insects and centipedes and stuff begin to just crawl out of it everywhere you just but you just you power through and just start hammering away with the crowbar and the the hammer uh and it, it you were just about through you didn't quite make it all the way through but you got pretty close see i told you deal the fuckery i deal. thought he met the exterior deal. wall <sighs> and that's his turn uh. All right. Well, that brings us to Ash. Uh, Ash is going to try to move into this room to the north of him there and is going to try to line up his timing and go through this door. Um, I think I what? know what you're going for, and I think it's brilliant. I'm glad you know, because I'm, I'm lost. I think I know. <laughs> it's either, it's either going to be a big win or an old or fuck. a big loss. <laughs> <laughs> we gambling. <laughs> yeah, dexterity saving throw. I'm sorry. Okay. Um. I think that's kind of my strong suit. 17. Nice. 17, yeah, so you're just timing the blades. You managed to jump through them before they before they catch you. Uh, I'm going to move over to the dollhouse, and I am going to reach in and rip off the top floor wall on the side where I see everybody trying to go through on that staircase and see what happens. Okay. Uh, so you, you knock over the, the dollhouse itself. You, you rip off the wall and you're, you're trying to see if anything changes like where tens is. Yeah. By where tens is or where they're like, I know they're going down that stair right now. So they're kind of in that stairwell. Like, so the sure. wall on that side of the house. Yep. So as you as you rip the wall, tens, you you watch as it just the whole thing just collapses in front of you. 
Yeah. <laughs> Bring that fucker with you. <laughs> wow. He just stands there. He's like, I did it. <laughs> uh, and then I'm going to try to look through the blades to see if the wall is missing. And if it is, that'll, that'll be the end of my turn. I have... Mm-hmm. I feel more yeah, I, I would say my... from that from your angle, yeah, you could you could see out there if you come this way with the torch, yeah, you can see it. And, and Tens is clearly pretty excited about the fact that the wall collapsed. <laughs> uh, then yeah, that'll <laughs> that'll be the end of my turn. All right. Right, that brings us back to Durango. You are on the other side. You watch as the you know, the wall behind you just just crumbles down and gets bits of rotten wood and insects begin to crawl into the the stairwell. Uh, as Tens just sort of looks through and smiles and waves. Cole is on the other side, just aggravated, trying to trying to time the blades. <laughs> yeah, as the wall comes down, Durango whirls with his loot leveled like he's expecting. Expecting more monsters, more 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 monstrosities, but uh, seeing well. the elf, he visibly relaxes <laughs> and continues to make his way down the stairs. Assuming that there's nothing obviously swinging in his face that will, you know, <laughs> bisect him or something. Sure. Wh- who knows? You do. You're, 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 <laughs> the, you're the one who knows that. <laughs> you are the one who um... knows. <laughs> All right, so you push your way back down the stairs at the bottom of the stairwell. Those two, those two secret doors still. <laughs> just the blade is just spinning. All right, well, inspired by uh, what you just saw happen at the top of the stairs, uh, Durango is going to level his loot at uh, the wall, like to the left of uh, left of the token there, and and try and blast it. See if it'll okay. come down. That's uh, it's an eleven to hit. Eleven hits the wall. <laughs> <laughs> For ten damage. Yeah, so ten points as you smash the, the, you just you send that blast out of the tip of the loot and it, it breaks through those rotten, those rotten planks as the wall splinters and splashes across the other side of the room. Peering cautiously uh, before going through, Durango. Uh, Makes his way through this this new opening he's created and shouts back up the st- uh, up, shouts back up the stairs to everybody else. If I have made the way. Yeah, however, you step through and right to your right is another doorway filled with spinning blades. <laughs> Perhaps not. Mm-hmm. All right, Cole. Um. Dejected at this point, uh, Cowell's going to um, just casually walk through the the cavity that Tensvet has made. Oh yeah, fucking elves. <laughs> You'll come to love me eventually. And as I get to the bottom of it, I'm going to um, see the hole that Durango made in the subsequent door on his way, and I'm gonna try the uh, the north side wall here. Just bash it in. So that is a doorway. On either side of you is a doorway. Oh. Um. On b- both sides is a doorway. I thought the doorway was mm-hmm. was, was right nope, there. There's, I can't. There's, yeah, I... It's, there's, there's actually yeah, there's two doorways now. Oh, oh, fantastic. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um. He said, I'm going to cut you down. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I don't have a choice. I got to. I don't know that he's ripping walls off of a dollhouse up there. So, um, I just grab a morning star. And, hey, if this is the day, this is the day. And I just try to time and I rush through. Hope, hoping to keep the morning star above me, so maybe if a blade <laughs> comes down, you know. As a dex, dex saving. You got it. 
See, smart trap makers make him come from below. An 11. As you rush through the door, you just barely make it to the other side, and, and as you're the, the, a bit of your, your, your cloth just gets caught just as you make it to the other side. Oh, my balls are so tight right now. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> balls are so tight right now. <laughs> Okay. He uh he looks over his shoulder and he looks for Ash. He says, "Ash, you coming?" Huh? Are you coming? Yeah. And he leaps down and goes through and around. <laughs> and he sees the situation at hand. Let's see, that was one, two, three, four, so that's four, five. Hmm. Hmm. He's going to shrug and hit the wall that's near him. Okay. Go ahead and make a... Are you attacking with the crowbar again? Yep. All right. Plus two. 21 hits that's the wall. That's a 21 sound. <laughs> E4 plus two again. Mm-hmm. Three points of damage. Three, yeah. So although the although the, the everything is tearing and breaking off the wall, you just can't you can't quite make it through. You're just not strong enough to to punch through the wall in one go. What? what? Oh, that. The other side, you bits and planks just tumble down the stairs below. That's it. All right, Ash. Huh. That worked. Uh, and I'm gonna spend my turn dismantling the side of the house that's closest that would be like the east side as we're looking at this map um, so. from roof to, to floor so that way it's the exterior most walls are nothing but open on that side and then also okay. knock out my the door to the room that I'm in. And then I'll just spend my turn doing that and doing it in such a way that I'm not destroying other aspects of the house. Okay. Just pull the wall down there. And then... I don't think there's architect's tools in 5th edition. <laughs> just pull the wall down there. Okay. Perfect. So that, so that uh that ends your turn you just take your whole turn just just yep. trying to remove walls essentially yep right. okay uh, uh tens coal um and durango uh from the the bit of wall that breaks down it just crumbles all of a sudden as if on its own um, Tenzveta, right in front of you. And your, your smile again, that your, your plan is working, but as you watch these insects and everything go scurrying out, this, um, you hear this bit of squeaking as this, as all of a sudden you, it'd be one, two, three, just a dozen, all of a sudden all these rats just begin swarming out of the walls around you. Well, there's the pets that we needed. Tends that it is a 13 hit. No. No, right. Yeah, so you, you manage to back away in time as the rats just come spewing out of the wall in front of you, uh, biting and trying to nip at you as they do, kind of backing you up against the wall behind you. All right, with that, uh, Durango, you're up. Uh, seeing the, the swarm of rats coming for Tensveta, um, Durango uh, plays a, a very, very spooky tune and attempts to scare them a, off. You don't, have, you don't actually have a good line of sight. Oh, oh I thought they were, they were like coming through. Okay. Um, 
Yeah, they're the kind of in front of him, like like falling off the stairs. But there's, yeah, I mean, technically there's like a doorway here. Things are getting a little weird because of doors falling <laughs> down and things like that. But yeah, there's a bit of wall there in between you. Yeah. All right. And so Durango just watches Tens uh, dancing as something tries to tries to eat him. <laughs> uh, my my friend, what is wrong? Why do you not move? Pets, pets, lots of pets. Is this you want? You want pets? No, 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 no. <laughs> uh, my bad. Rats. And oh. rats, eh? It's gonna take a step closer. Does that grant any line of sight there? Can yeah. So as you as you step in, you can see the rats now just swarming and falling out of the wall onto the stairs and scurrying around, trying to pull their way up. All right, all right. At this point, Durango will try to scare them off with a spooky tune. Spooky tune them. Favorite bard move, spooky tune. <laughs> <laughs> Technically, it is on the bard list. Is it really? I'm pretty sure Cause Fear is on the uh, on the bard. Oh, 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 yeah. I thought you meant like literally something called spooky tune. I was like, no. Nah. <laughs> Oh, see, you are really literally going to cause fear. Yeah. I mean, you could consider whispers to have spooky tunes, but that's beside the point. Uh, Twelve is a failure. Okay, so the rats all are frightened. That's all that's, I got. That's their turn. They have to move, right? Not immediately. Um, it doesn't actually dictate. It just says that they become frightened. Um, until the spell ends and they can repeat the saving okay. throw at the end of their turns. Okay. All right. Is that end your turn? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Cole. Um. Seeing as those rats are in the wall, if I move, are they going to get an attack of opportunity on me? No, because they're technically below you. All right, yeah. So I'm, I'm going to just keep running for, running for the stairs. And... That'd be right. 30 feet. Yeah so, yeah, so now you... As you rush down the stairwell, um, the floorboards and the, the stairs begin to sort of creak and, and, and shift underneath you, but you manage to... Keep your footing as you run down the banister. Uh, now, the, now you see the rats spilling out of the walls and just and just flooding down the stairs. Um. Can, um. Can I like smash at him? Yeah. Just to clear, clear, pave, pave the way. Yeah. Go ahead and make an attack. Uh, 16. 16 hits. Go ahead and roll damage. I bat. Eight points. All right, eight points of damage. So you begin. You just begin kicking and bashing at these rats that are that are trying to. They're starting to spill down the stairs. They just you know several of them go flying and just just you know, just just blood and, and rat carcasses piling up on the stairs. And yeah, that's it. All right. All right, Ash. All Excuse right. Me. I didn't get a turn. Oh. Did you not get a turn? No. Nope. Oh, I guess I skipped you. Tens Uh, we're gonna go crazy here. We're gonna pull out our rapier and a dagger and drop down on top of these rats, trying to uh, coax the DM for some uh, for some uh, advantage on an attack before disengaging away from them and running down the stairs. Uh, I'll give you advantage because Cole is right there. So technically you've got your ally there. So go ahead and go ahead and use okay. it. I needed it. 19 to hit. <laughs> uh, yeah, 19 hits. Go ahead and roll damage. Six. Oop. And sneak attack. Yeah, and, yeah. Nine points of damage to the rats, disengage, and run down the stairs. 
Okay, so you're trying to run the other way? Yeah, I'm trying to... I'm falling through the stairs and going, uh, like, through the wall on top of these rats. Yep, trying yep. to stab as many as he can on the way down and then just... <sighs> get away. I just picture you, like, Legend of Zelda, Link, downward stab. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so Shish from kebab. there, you want to keep going down? Uh... Five. Yeah. Yeah, five. We'll say five, ten. Well, I mean, how far is it down the center at this point? We're on the second floor, right? Uh, you're on the third floor, uh, realistically, because you came down from the attic. So this, the floor that you just jumped into, is the third floor. So you've got thirty feet. Hmm. I can handle it. Yeah, I can handle it. Yeah, I can okay, handle so you it. Just jump all the way down to the bottom. Yeah, yeah, let's do it. All right. <laughs> three floors. You're gonna jump down three floors. Yeah. <laughs> like occasionally trying to catch himself with one of the blades, and to slow his fall as much as possible. But other than that, let's go. It has a banister, man. You could have just like <laughs> slid, slid down the banister, down. and that's lame. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so as you you just you just bolt, you watch him, he comes down, he just starts swirling blades around killing he, rats before just hopping over the banister all the way down to the third floor. Go ahead and make an acrobatics for me. Hey, I'm good at that. Mm -hmm. I shouldn't have said anything, it's gonna curse me. Hey, oh, yeah. what do you know? Twenty two. <laughs> Twenty two is good. <laughs> you got uh, yeah, so, that's not, so lucky. Yeah, not bad at all as <laughs> you as you slam down onto the, the bottom floor. The bottom floor of this house was stone right on top of that, um, on top of that, uh, that architecture underneath. As you slam down on it, you feel your ankles creak and your knee crack against the stonework, ah. but you, the adrenaline driving you, you just managed to pick yourself up. Full, uh, full five damage? Mm-hmm. Uh, he, uh, he catches himself. Ah, yeah. Um. Hmm. <laughs> and I'm just that's uh, that's my turn. All right. Worth it. Tenzveta, the the other thing that you begin to see as you slam down on that bottom floor. Um, you are you you see the door to the exit, but you see that fireplace directly across from you. As you stare at it, the, the, the fire begins to rage and, and burn up inside as this black, this thick black smoke just begins to pour outwards and start to fill the room. Ash. Okay, Ash. so uh, in the attic. <laughs> Still in the attic, yeah. Still in the attic. Um, so I took out the whole exterior east wall from uh, third floor down, right? Is that so how the, you interpreted the wall, that as a, Looking outside, the wall to the house is still there. It's the okay. interior walls are collapsing where you pulled them out. Okay, okay. Um, I'm going to make a point to ensure that the door that I'm in front of right now and the main entrance on the ground floor is ripped off. Yep. Yeah, that whole, that whole wall in front of you is gone. Okay. Uh, and yeah, I'm going to use... Uh, my movement to try to catch up. Can I get about there? Uh, oh, I can dash, can I? Mm -hmm. I um, and so yeah, then we'll dash down to 20 more feet when I get down to the next level. Join me. Leave the banister. No. I have 6 <laughs> HP. <laughs> Okay, there I am. I'm gonna use that. I'm gonna look and see that there's a bunch of rats. Yeah, the, rat, the rats are there. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, I'm gonna. So this whole wall right here is gone, right? Correct. Okay, so I'm gonna move here, or maybe I can't. Um, move. Where are you trying to move? Here? Just right here at the top of the the banister. 
to the top of the stairs. Oh, yeah. on, I mean, on it's, the kind of, it's kind of a tough leap to make because uh, directly underneath you was a drop, so you could try to like leap over to the banister and grab onto it and pull yourself back up if you're trying to go that way. Yeah, I'm trying to just get on that landing. All right, make a make an make an athletics or acrobatics check for me. Acrobatics. That's my strong suit. It is going to be a 19. And now pick high or low. Uh, I. Oh, look at that. <laughs> so you you leap across this um, this this bit of a gap and you grab onto the wooden banister over the edge. You feel the banister creak in your hands as you quickly pull yourself up and, and it, it snaps a little bit as you do and, and, and you can see the wood break off underneath um, uh, it, almost in your hands as you, as you do as if it wasn't meant to carry the weight of a full grown person yanking on it right uh, but you pull yourself up to the other side no problem yeah. uh, and then yeah that'll end my turn that the rats are running away from you so they're gonna run they're gonna dash at their full speed Okay, and so with that, it is uh, back to you, Durango. The rat, whatever the remaining rats, take off, scurrying down the stairs. All right. So using the dash action, Durango is gonna leap uh, onto the stairwell and carefully minding his step as he runs, careful not to get rat guts all over his boots. Uh, mm -hmm. He he books down the stairwell. Right, so from there, you got another. All right, so that's your that's your five uh, that's five feet of movement for you down there, and then you can keep going down the stairs. So you can go five, ten, fifteen, twenty, twenty-five, thirty. We'll get you right here. Uh, right, so that's... as you as you rush down the stairs, you see, uh, especially from this angle, this that blood, this that thick black smoke beginning to fill the room. You. <laughs> cough and, and hack a little bit as a bit of it reaches you. And that's, that's my turn. Mm -hmm. um, just rushing down the stairs as fast as I can. Right. So yeah, I'll use my movement to 30 feet, then I'll use my action to dash. Yeah, the 30. Yep, so I'll say your first movement gets you right here, right next to Durango. Yeah. Uh, you are in that room. You see that you're, as you're as you're rushing down the stairs, the black smoke is just filling the stairwell and, and, and cascading up the stairways now. Uh, you, okay. you cough as well a little bit as you, okay. as you push through it. And the, but the, the, the vision, the, your vision of the room is beginning to obscure as you, as you rush through this thick black smoke starting to fill it. But yeah, you want to use the rest of your movement? Yeah, yeah, as front door you know i got the i got my coat over my over my mouth all right so you can get to there yeah are, are those doors uh, currently spinning blades they are sorry Um, I can't do anything about it now, but okay. Yep. All right, it's better. Repeat what's happening at this door here. So the doors, every door is, is a set of spinning blades. So every single one. Okay. Yeah. Then uh, he's going to get low because he knows not to breathe fire or to breathe smoke. Gonna rush over here, 
And he's going to look at Cole with a big, goofy smile, take his crowbar, and just start slamming <laughs> at the side of the door frame. All right, go ahead and make, go ahead and make another attack roll. How about a 13? 13 hits. The wall. Come on. Max damage. Let's do this. Close. I will Nine. do it, yeah. So as you as you, as you you begin to, in a panic now, as the room is filling with that black smoke, you slam uh, your, 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 your hammer and crowbar against the walls. It just breaks and falls down. All right. Uh, are the blades still a problem in this portion? Since it's right uh, by we'll the door. say frame. they are in half of it. Okay. So you can go through this way. Okay. Then he's going to make the rest of his movement. That's one, two, three, four, five. He'd be right here. If that took his action, bonus action, dash, try to get to that, uh, try to get through that door. It's locked, I'm assuming, or blades, one of the two. You're muted. The entire room is almost undulating around you as if as if anger angry and vibrating it does not want you to leave the house at all and you can see as you reach this last door your your hand hits the handle and you push and it swings open i'm gonna wait that's my turn Durango. So, what's going on in the in the fireplace there? Would you say that qualifies as like a small campfire, or or is it a larger scale blaze that's emitting this smoke? Uh, I would say it's it's a larger. It the the smoke at this point almost seems unnatural. Let's say that. Okay. Um, so, using prestidigitation, Durango is going to make a gust of wind to blow all the smoke towards the north side of of the of the building. Okay. Try and like give him some some room to breathe. And he's going to move to the uh, the opening that's been created. That's one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, step through, and that's that's all I got. Okay, so you blow some of that smoke towards the north side. It just begins to cascade through the open doorways, through those spinning blades, and just blacking out the other rooms uh, before it dissipates as you as you enter this other room and just begins to uh, continue to pour out and fill the room. Uh, with that, we are back to Cole. Yeah, f following suit. Right through. Uh, this doorway, uh, it's, it's swung right open, you said. Mm hmm. Uh, I, I'm just going to. Like... around you almost, almost looking damp as they start to. Blood just starts to seep. From the from the boards and the walls themselves, as they are almost undulating around you, like some sort of wicked throat, the maw of some giant creature. Um, I'm just gonna spin around on my heels, me, me heels, and uh, do a bow and jaunt out the door. All right. As Cole rushes out of the building, Tensveta, you are up. He's going to hold his action and uh, his and to dash out or to open the door if it decides it's going to try and close, waiting for everybody else to get out first. Okay. Ash. Uh, so I think we skipped over me last time. Because I think I didn't go after tens. Um, when he, because he tens ripped open the door on the first floor or whatever, and then we went back to. Um... Okay, you're running down the stairs. I'm yeah, yeah. I, I'm, at the end of the day, I'm gonna double. I'm gonna yeah. dash my way out of yeah, the house. Yeah, That's yeah, why yeah. I didn't so let's say, interrupt let's say the floor. Thirty here. Thing. Let's say thirty here. Sixty would get you here. Uh, so we'll say now it's your turn. Okay. Uh, then, yeah, I'm going to dash 20, 30, and then, yeah, just seeing everybody getting out. going to use my last bit of dash to dash out. 
chuck up a peace sign as everybody is. I'm running by. <laughs> <laughs> and that'll be it. Durango. Um, seeing the, the last man in the group run along from behind him, uh, Durango wastes no time clearing the uh, the exit. And with that tens, you use your action that you were holding to rush to the door. Uh, as you do, the door slam shut behind you. Well, um, what was the name of that tavern that we were supposed to go to? I know, but it got a bottle of Terry's with my name on it. Same. <laughs> yeah, Terry's. As you rush out into the street, the house, you turn around, all of you sort of look at this very plain looking brick and wood, brownstone esque house. That iron gate still rusty, swinging in the front of it. As you kind of just all look at all look at each other, and that's where we'll uh, so we'll take our first break. So, uh, thank you everybody for hanging out with us here. Thank you for our Death House journey. Uh, we are uh, giving away dice, Dragonite dice, for the stream. So go ahead and spend your elf eggs if you have not already. Uh, Two thousand gets you an entry into our Dragonite dice giveaway. We also have the Steam game bribe giveaway that. Uh, Ryan says, I forget all the time. That's just 300, <laughs> literally the price of a follow. Get you that Steam game giveaway entry for the end of tonight. And I think we're giving away, what was it called, Ben? Uh, tonight it is, what is it, deployed, deployment, uh, something. Deployment. deployment, yeah. Sounds great. Uh, it's got pretty it, it looks like a, Yeah, it look, looks like a fun game. Uh, and you can have it for free. Just click the buttons, get the rewards do all that stuff and we'll see you back here and i don't know give us 10. Look at that. Look at that great video, Ryan. Such a good job. Thanks, buddy. I was so yeah. upset that I didn't play it earlier. That's all right. You spent all that time making it. We've played it twice. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right. So back in the dreary, rainy streets of this grayed out, misty city. Standing in front of this innocuous looking Innocuous looking, not innocuous, innocuous looking home. You all breathe a sigh of misty air. The streets are dark all around you, blackness. There are no torches lit. There are no lanterns lit in the dark street. Everything around you, black. So, given that there are no guards around, do you think we'll get caught if we just commit a little bit of arson? <laughs> I don't know. I could try it, but I have a feeling that would resist. I mean, I could slap you in the back of the head again, and you can go back in there and uh, potentially uh, just drop a torch and run out, assuming that you don't get trapped in all that bullshit again. Lots of fuckery. I need to go in that house ever again. We'll leave it. <laughs> I'm going to get a drink and then just grab Durango by the shoulder. 
Durango winces slightly as he is in rather rough shape, but mm-hmm. uh, does his best not to show it as he follows along. Uh, he follows along with a handout, just kind of like, hey, uh, Durango, I noticed a severe lack of brains exploding inside. Um, granted, there weren't a lot of brains, but can't explain. It is as you say, Mr. Tens, not a lot of brains to explode, but but tonight, <laughs> perhaps, uh, perhaps I can blow some minds for you. You watch. Hmm. He looks over at Ash. You coming? I'm going to need cotton swabs. Put my ears. <laughs> <laughs> and Ash will hike off with him. I like that. Yeah, this is just this is just how uh, the art. canon now. This is how Ash walks. He's just... No, this is how we say we're moving on from yeah. now on. <laughs> As you, uh, as you make your way back down these dreary streets, finding again through the dark that main road and looking westward towards the location of where the Blood of the Vine Tavern was supposed to be. You continue to walk past dark home after dark home, empty streets glistening in the moonlight, wet. <sighs> as a light rain continues to fall. From another house nearby, you hear uh, moaning again, a woman crying as you pass by. Uh-oh. Mm-mm. Nope. Yeah, you got, you got to help her too. Okay. As badly as I want to, crying people in the woods are also not something that we should consider doing uh, if this is anything like that. No. This place fucking sucks. It's even raining. <clears throat> Sorry. Got something in my throat. Something normal say, for a second. Follow a bug. Hmm. I'd be curious to ask about that house. Where is this place? And I'm just like, so like hands up and just sort of frustrated, just looking for like the damn bar. I'm going to see if I can see like street signs at all to see if like where we, if there's any logical numbering or lettering to the streets or if there's like a, a very clear landmark nearby that's not just like a house. Make a perception check. Perception. 23. So you, again, you were, you were led generally or pointed generally in the direction, which is still a little further west through town. Uh, most of the street signs and most of the signs on the houses, everything is faded and sort of worn out, crossed out. Um, broken it's not it's it's almost as if the city itself wants you to be lost you don't see any signs that point in any obvious direction other than this main road that seems to bisect the town I got no idea. If we ain't find it soon, we're gonna have to pitch a tent or something. I've slept in pretty uh, plenty of ditches since I've got here. Uh, this is what I've got here. I mean, I've got my bedroll. Check, check, check. Oh, blanket. I even have that. Um. I'm a liar. Do I even? Have, I don't even have a bedroll. That's funny. Yeah, <laughs> I've got a blanket. <laughs> That's it. 
Um, we got ten feet of string. Ten oh, that, somewhere. Ten somewhere in the distance, down one of the streets, you see. It looks like a cart moving from door to door. Can I tell what they're doing? Make a perception check. Can I call it insight? No, I'm just kidding. Uh, 13. 13. So with your, what you can see in the dark is it's very difficult because it's it's a few streets down and you can just make out the shape and you hear the wheels going. So you can you just you barely see it. You don't see anybody in front of the cart. You can just see the cart moving and you hear it grinding against the stones and then stopping. Nothing, no one's going to or from it? From, from what you can see again, like so, so imagine you're you're standing at this crossroads right now. Mm -hmm. So to the north, you can see just just off in the distance, just the edge of your view in the darkness, the just the bare barest outline of this cart rolling, and then stopping, and then he's going to get stopping. frustrated in his summer heat as uh, the rain kind of evaporates off of him as it hits his skin. He just starts. He goes into a bit of a, a skip hop towards it before he starts walking briskly, and he just says, "Hey, uh, I need some help." Uh, you seem to be the only people around. Uh, help? Oh, yeah. As you approach in the street, you see this, this cloth-covered cart with these various shelves lined with these little pies. An old woman returns from a door, nobody answers the door, and she goes back and she begins to lift the cart up and she turns to you and says, eh. Oh. Help, you say. Uh, I, I don't know that I can be much help to you. Perhaps a dream pastry. I'm sorry. A, a dream pastry? Or cream? Yes, the just a single gold piece for for just a pastry. I'll take four. One gold. Four. Oh, excellent. And she, you can see she puts the cart back down and she goes around and she grabs four of these pastries and wraps them up and hands them to you. He pulls a few Holds coins. out a, a, like a spindly, spindly hand. He pulls out five coins and gives her five for him. So generous. Thank you, young man. Of course. Elvish Could you possibly... Too. We don't see many elves around here. And... Yes. Can I just... Please, could you possibly also tell us where the Blood of the Vine Tavern is? We'll, we'll eat this whenever we get there. Thank you for this delightful little treat. But we're, we're looking to get somewhere, you see. And I... <clears throat> yes. That's all. No, okay. Um, the Blood of the Vine. Follow the, the old Slavic road. Svalic road. Svalic. Okay. Down through the center of town to the west. You can't miss it. A few blocks. Right. Do the streets always stretch on their own? Uh, it's a confusing place for newcomers, but you'll get used to it. Do you do this every night? Oh, yes, of course. Are you always turned away? Not always. Am I getting anything off this lady? Like, is she like? Yeah, is she just she's, crazy. She's, she seems she's like she's not vibes. on the level here. Yeah, <laughs> make a make an insight check. Eighteen. Okay, Chuck. I'm going to uh, I'm going to send you something. Uh, what are the rest of you doing while Chuck is um, paying for pastries? 
I'm I'm kind of looking at the cart to see if there's any like obvious like poison bottles hanging off off the sure. off make, the uh, cart. Make a perception check. Yeah. Uh, Oh, horrible. That's a seven. The card itself just seems to be carrying pies. I mean, that's all you see are these these small little pastries. They don't look particularly appetizing. Uh, they don't look awful. They're just, it's, they're very plain, what look like basic, almost meat pies. These dream pastries. Uh, uh, why do you call them dream pastries? <laughs> it's uh, it's just a fun little name. It's good to help you find sleep in these dark times. Yeah, yeah. It's, there's, there's something wrong with her. <laughs> Yeah, Durango's still like leaning on Cole as they kind of like half support each other at this point. Yeah. Um, his, his tail's like flicking behind him in annoyance as they're waylaid once again mm -hmm. on, on their way to a hot meal. But he's he's watching this old lady, and he's he's looking to see if she's a, if she's a con artist. You know, he's he's kind of familiar with grifters and and things like that. So he's he's, he's trying to see if she's if she's hiding anything. Yeah, he uh, he pulls out a couple of marbles. From his his bag of marbles, his bag of thousand, he motions to her with with them with the fist closed for her to take them. What are these? A gift. A gift, you say? Yes. Nothing. Nothing in Barovia is free, my child. Gift. Uh, I'm. I'm not from here. Uh, where I'm from, gifts aren't always free either. But you've already given me a gift of information, and while I may have paid an extra gold, that was simply because I felt bad for you going door to door with no one answering. So it seems. This is more for. This is more for that information. I see. Make a persuasion check. Thirteen. She sort of eyes you sideways and looks at all your friends. A gift you say and these belong to you? And you give them freely? Not very often, but yes. Well, I will accept this child's toy. I'll give her three. She takes the marbles in her hand. Those spindly, spindly fingers wrap around them, graze against yours as they do. This icy, cold races through your summer form. And she places them somewhere in her robes. You said just on the Svalik road, right? Yes, of course. Okay. He turns to the others and he holds the pastries in his hand without handing them out and he just says we we know where we're going and he starts leading the way thank you madam of course um as soon as we're down the road long enough out of earshot i'm just gonna go to tenzin i uh, what what was that all about what was what all about first off a uh, uh, a gold a gold for pie. That's, that's pricey. Money doesn't matter to me. What a waste. Yeah, how about the marbles? He looks over at the bard. And he just says, At what point do you think that whatever connection you have to your loot would cause a recursion through the weave to where you could potentially locate them again. 
Uh, Durango raises an eyebrow quizzically. Um, you must forgive me, friend. My, uh, my, my grasp of this tongue is loose. He, uh, he switches to a vessel to see if you catch a vessel, and he repeats the sentence. No, no, not a vessel. No. And then he tries Elvish. These can't under common. Uh, Durango just smiles and shrugs <laughs> helplessly. <laughs> All right, then. Um, Perhaps you use a smaller word, um, recursion. Right. Uh, think of it as, well, let's take bats, for instance. Echolocation, the ability to send out waves out into the air and then find them back, uh, like receive them back upon your, your senses, whatever they may be, and finding little bubbles in them to see how far away you are from them. Does that make sense? Like a, like a dowsing rod. Do you ever use a dowsing rod? I have been many places. I've heard of many things. Uh, the, the stick that finds water, yes, I've, I've heard of this. Similar. But there's, I've, I've heard of, no, I've not just heard of, I've actually had it used against me a time or two, uh, the ability to find things or people by casting magic. Yeah. This is a trick I have heard of, but I am not uh, learned in the ways myself. But uh, right. tell me, friend, how does this get hot stew in my belly? Well, you could locate stew. Or a bowl. Or a spoon. Or a cauldron, for that matter. Regardless, I, I don't like her. I don't plan on eating these. Yeah, well, I might try a bite. They do smell good. But if you don't want them, that's fine. Uh, something about her demeanor didn't feel right. I've seen a thing or two, and she she's off, mate. She's not. Uh... And, you know when someone just it just uses language in a way that just it, it ain't it ain't it ain't usual it ain't proper. He just... gives a look at Durango and just. Well, not <laughs> not, not not from ignorance. Yes. Uh, it, using the words like like poetry, but in a uh, dark way. Uh, Allow me to enlighten you. I come from a place where people like to do fuckery. I, I even a word. And I... This is included are, in such things. Are you a duke of fuckery? <laughs> is this where you are from? <laughs> Not exactly. <laughs> uh, I'm with you, mate, though. I ain't I, in that. Well, Her so skin let's... was very, very cold. All I want is a drink and a bed. Agreed. Thirded, and I would hate to live in your guys' brains at all, <laughs> ever. <laughs> Don't want to do it. I'd love to have a day in yours. You have to let me pick yours every once in a while. I get bored otherwise. Uh. Sir Cole has the right of it, though. We should make our way. Waste no time. And we're having this casual conversation about whether or not to eat the pies while we are covered in blood. And we're just, just like... <laughs> <laughs> uh, noticing this, uh, yeah, Durango, as they're talking, is snapping his fingers at people and trying to get them cleaned up. If they're, if they're going to be companions of the great Durango Fortescue, they must be presentable. You see Ash start doing, like, mimicking you and then eventually start <laughs> doing it as well. Oh? Legitimately, yeah. Prestidigitation. 
Prestid- presto. Yeah, it's one of those words, man. Prestidigitation. prestidigitation. Yeah, yeah. it's prestidigitation. I, I had it and then I lost it. Prestidigitation. Just calling it presto is worthwhile. Like spolic. <laughs> <laughs> ah, you learn very fast, my friend. Uh, you learn from the Rango, perhaps? Yeah, I, I see everything. <laughs> Except for where this Slavic, Salic, Saronian, where the road is. I, like, I think it's the main one. All right. It is. From what she was saying, it seems that way. Let's go. He leads the way. <laughs> you make your way down. <laughs> <laughs> Wet, dreary, <laughs> dark road. You briskly walk uh, several hundred feet and uh, several blocks. You do find mm. a large building. Um, the door is ajar, the uh, or it's wide open. To be honest, the uh, there's a sign on the front that reads "The Blood of the Vine." Tens, you look the sign seems a little off to you. It looks as if someone has scratched out the F in of in an attempt to scratch an N in its place. Hmm. He's not going to point it out. Oh. Yeah, but the uh, the bar itself, there is a soft light pouring out from the from the tavern uh some voices in particular one particularly louder than some of the others seems to be a little agitated but nothing nothing too nothing you can really make out from the distance here i will say it tends gets very quiet and he stops kind of at that uh, kind of just inside the doorway as he's just listening to the people talk and I'm going to sit there for a minute. Just listening. <clears throat> uh, there. Okay. From inside yeah. the tavern, you hear... Well, make make a perception check for me, actually. And you're pretty close, but I'm not necessarily looking for information. I'm just trying to get, yep. yeah. Seventeen. Cowards! All of you are cowards. Will no one here do nothing? Oi, sit down with this, Mark. We're not going through this every night. I'll go through it as long as it takes till someone in this town has the guts to do something to stand up to this devil. Do we all hear that, or is that just tens? Uh, I would say, I, I, yeah, I would say from where you're all at, um, it's it's primarily, yeah, it's pretty much audible. Nobody's trying to hide their voices. It's, it's fairly loud. It's a bit of a drunken argument. It says we're, it says we're still in combat, by the way. You so I can't do combat. And Durango does oh. to keep a friendly expression, but he definitely shoots Cole a, a worried glance at the talk of stand up to this devil. Um... I just, I just look at him. Like, we had this talk before. We know how to make money off of this. Perhaps it is time to begin working the earth, plant the seeds. No better time than now. We have the audience. Yes, but first, we eat. And all right, all right. Yeah, of course, mate. Game is positive. 
Mm-hmm. Well, because I didn't want you just walking around while your friends were talking outside. <laughs> <laughs> I was just posting. I was just posting up where I said I was going to post up. That's mm-hmm. all. Well, if you're inside, the second you walk in, the tavern itself is meager, modest looking. It is maybe. Uh, it's two stories, the building itself, but it is the the interior is rather drab. Um, three Vistani women sit at a clo- at a table. They they look up briefly as you enter, and then continue to go back to whatever. Uh, it looks like they're playing some sort of card game on the table by the entrance. The barkeep is a pudgy, dirty looking man who. And it looks over at you, and as you come in, and gives you a big broken smile, broken tooth smile. Uh, the man who is making the majority of the noise, uh, his eyes dart towards the door as you make your way through. Oh, strangers! Perhaps, uh, perhaps someone here will have the balls to do something about this devil, huh? What about you? What kind of men do you take yourselves for? Um, Paul's gonna just slide up next to him and uh, very conspicuously just place uh, the shield on the bar top. Hey, uh, you know what this is? So, uh, again, the man speaking uh, sort of follows you to the bar and Eric, get these men drinks. Seems uh, seems you are a uh, servant of the, the Lord of Light, eh? Lathander. Would Lathander stand by and watch an innocent girl be drained of her life by the devil Strahd? Uh, who are we talking about now? Strahd? Uh, oh, what? We heard his name before, haven't we? Indeed, we have. Yes, he is the devil that lords over this land with fear and terror, snatching young girls in the night. Here, drink. Sit with me. Let me tell you. Um, yeah, pull up a stool and glance over at uh, Durango and kind of motion to another one of the stools. Oh, you don't get you don't get too caught up in all his nonsense. It's treason what it is. You more likely get killed in the night. Keeps talking like that, but what do you what do you have? What are you drinking? The pudgy bartender um, puts a couple uh, mugs out on the table or on the bar. Uh, whatever ale you got. I have heard much of the wine of this land. Oi, wine. Got it by the glass, got it by the pitcher. What's your poison? Uh, but by, by the glass for now, friend. But uh, perhaps circumstances shall change. <laughs> hmm. All right, glass of wine. Mug of ale. What, what about you two? He likes it, Ash. I'll take your finest glass of water. Water. And you? Pointy ears. Hmm? What you drinking? You got any uh, apple wine? Oh. A Terry's fan, I see. <laughs> <laughs> Oi, I can get you some apple wine. <laughs> he places he places the you see pours the uh the wine from from bottles to the two of you the apple wine in a slightly different thing with a very clear terry's apple wine logo on it um the ale he pours as well from a tap from a keg in the back and the, the water he just dips into a barrel and hands you a glass or a mug um cup three three copper pieces Perhaps uh, some some food as well, Barkeep. I I should have spoken sooner. 
Kitchen's closed. Oh, for for the common man, perhaps, but perhaps you are unaware. I am the great Durango Fortescue. The bright Durango Fortescue. Slam, slam my, my hand down on the table. Should you extend uh, some extra mm. hospitality to myself and my friends, perhaps I will make it worth your while with entertainment? And he gestures to, to the loot strung on his back. I ain't never heard of a mango portescue. <laughs> make, 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 a, make, a, make a persuasion check. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> Beautiful. Beautiful. I was ready. That's a 10. Mm-hmm. ten. I ain't got nothing for you, but perhaps if you're looking for in for the night, you get yourself some breakfast in the morning. Play a little song, make his mark shut up. I'll see if I can't rustle something up. But I ain't going to be warm. At this point, I do not think we uh, can be choosy. All right. Uh, See what I can do. I think we'll take a few rooms too. Three rooms. On me. All right. On me. Yeah. On you. Yeah, I've got it. We're good. Just three rooms. There's four of you. Uh, Ash, do you need to have a room to yourself? I can share if need be. And you too? Uh, I would hate to keep anyone awake with my practicing and my my and Durango used to bunking up I ain't here to judge nobody I, you know <laughs> just saying I'll just probably be down here for, for clarity night, so two rooms Mr. Mango of course going to stay with his bodyguard for the evening <laughs> good smart smart labor cost effective <laughs> so three rooms We'll call it two. Two rooms. All right. Well, 50 silver. And I'll throw the food in as well. I'll toss down five gold. This man throws money around. Yes. Yeah, right yes, he does. Yeah. You want some... You, you know this ain't silver, right? Yes. He looks over at the three women. All right. I'll tell you what. Thank if you, you can make sure that that food is 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 warm, there's another one in for you. I'll say what I can do. <laughs> he scoots it. He like scoots it off the bar with like a a grubby hand and wipes it. Wipes his hand on his apron as he as he. Carefully puts them in a little, a little coffer box behind the bar. Well, if that is uh, quite enough, you seem to be men of means. That the great Durango Fortescue, I've never heard of such a thing. But I am Ismark Koyonovich. Ismark Koyonovich. Koyonovich. Ah, well met, my friend. Uh, come, tell us more of this, uh, this, uh, Strahd. <laughs> Strahd is a monster. A devil. Takes the shape of a man. Pfft. It's not worth the spit it takes to say his name. My concern is my sister. His would ear you twitches? Would you men be interested in helping me escort her out of the village and get her somewhere safe, somewhere out of Srod's grasp? I have little to assist in this, but I'm a fighter. If that helps, I'll tell you what, you and I can talk about uh, some of the various customs. As uh, of of Barovia, um, 
because I have a few talents that I've been working on that I'd like to be able to blend in a little bit more with the locale. Uh, I think that we may be able to do something, or at least I'm willing to help you in such an endeavor. I don't know where you're trying to get her. Ideally, but it won't be without. Tonight. Ideally, yeah. Well, we could go in the morning. The morning is safer. Traveling the Svalik Road in the evening is uh, treacherous. There are many dangers in Barovia. I'm not certain how you found yourself here or what guided you to this awful place. He slides one of the pastries across the bar. Woman at a cot, believe it or not. Hmm. He looks down at it and... In the cart, you say. Very cold hands. Yes, I will... Uh, I will pass, but thank you. Who is you, she? Uh, yeah. I don't I don't know much of who she is, but again, who she is is not my concern. My concern is is Irina and her safety. You have to understand. Can I insight check that? See if he does actually know who the old lady is? Yeah, I'm kind of go ahead. Same Yeah, go ahead and make an insight check. Twenty. Ten. <laughs> uh, Ash, you you feel that he he he's he's being mostly honest in that he doesn't know who she is. He just does not want anything to do with her for some reason that he's not being particularly open about. This place you want to take your daughter. Or my sister. sister. Sorry. Yes. A lot of people go there to stay safe. Uh, it's a very well defended town. It is to the west of here. It is called Valaki. There is truly no safe place in in this land from Stroll, but it is it is better than here. He looks at Ash and he says, I don't think that If he's as awful as you say he is, and no one is safe here in this place, uh, I don't think he's the only hunter in this land anymore. Uh, what, what does this mean? Well, is he a hunter, or does he gather you like sheep? He feeds off us like cattle. What, what do you mean feeds off you? Yeah? Like, in a literal he, sense, or...? He feeds off of us like cattle. Like, like we are... Um... He's a cursed creature. Hmm. He's More not fuckery. a human being. He is a devil in men flesh. And he ain't no, like, boogeyman. You've seen him. Aye, we've seen him. Yeah. He spits again. He comes and go. He lords over us. He sneaks in to feast on my sister in the night. He's obsessed with her. There's no safe place, but at least in Velaki we can get her some sort of help, some sort of... She, at least she will not be this close. You say he sneaks in. Is he afraid of the masses, not the individual, then? You see, this... I don't understand. I know it is strange to outsiders. This this is not a man we speak of. It is, it is evil. A devil, yes, I understand. Yes, he's a... Yes. He fears nothing. And so he is your... He enjoys playing with us, like, toys... Is he rough with his toys? He cares nothing for his toys. Is your sister physically hindered in any way? She grows weaker with every day. Strahd's curse, his 
poison. It infects those he feeds off of. And over time, they become like him. They become vampire. Um, sort of looks around, looks looks across the table at the three the three women. What I have learned about any of this, I mean, I'm sure I would have had some like demonology courses or you know, something. Make a history effect. check or a history or religion. I'll give you either one. Okay. Um, religion's better, not by much, but it's better. Oh, 13. I would say you've heard some, you know, you weren't the most studious. No. <laughs> um, so you have some vague grasp on what a vampire is more from like, you know, it's, it's, uh, any, it's a, some, some kind of form of undead, it, it, you know, that drinks blood and, and that's about it. Um, maybe, maybe Durango's, uh, heard some old songs about, uh, about these things before. Uh, I'll give you a history check, sure. While he's Not doing that, skill monkey. he'll uh, he'll pat Ash on the shoulder and like lean in close and just say, "Get as much information off of him as you can." I'm gonna play some cards. He's gonna sit down with the three ladies at the table. <clears throat> Ash, who had previously been standing, decides to take a seat. That ends as vacated. Um, and he was, yes, he is, he is vampire. That is his curse, and he places it on all of the land. So, he, if he's as, as powerful as you say he is, what, what sort of chance do you think that we're actually going to be able to pull this off? Well, he is vampire, although he is been seen at points in the day he is weaker I think we can if we travel during the day we can get her to Valaki at least try to hide her from his gaze uh, is it more than a day's travel to get there <clears throat> no we should be able to make it in the day Please, I would not ask this of you if I had no other choice, but you seem <coughs> capable men. It sounds like a noble quest fit for uh, for heroes, no? Absolutely. Rango what's what's noble at, uh, quest? Call? Yeah, what's, what nobler quest could you ask for? But, uh, well, heroes like Sir Cole, um, their time does not come cheap, my friend. His services are in high demand. I don't have much to offer as far as coin. Uh, for such a task, I could give you what meager bits I have. Of course, I'd be more than happy to help work off the rest for all of you. Um, but I, I, what is uh, the price? Why not uh, give, give us a moment? Um, Cole's gonna stand up and just, you know, m mug in hand and grab Durango, just trying to find like a, a quieter sort of corner where there might not be eavesdropping or maybe just like right outside the front door or something, just somewhere that feels a little more, slightly more private. Um, Tenzveta, hmm? you sit with the three women, the Vistani women. You can tell mm -hmm. by the sort of brightly colored um, headdresses and, and garments that they're wearing, that raven black hair that you saw on the previous night as they look up at you. Well, can we help you? It is considered rude where we come from to just uh, enter somewhere uninvited. You see, I uh, he pulls his cloak around, that brightly colored cloak that probably has a few stains on it now. He says, 
we've met some of your friends recently, and I wanted to know if you wanted to play a game or two of cards. So you guys were playing, playing cards. You mind if I join? Yeah, it's not uh, typically our custom to just play cards with anyone. We have had a long-standing game that we I think play. It's on the next hand. It has been quite some time. Uh, you and your friends, uh, newcomers? He looks over his shoulder at him and just says, they are. I've been here a time or two. Uh, well, uh, my name is Elenka. This is Alenka? my sister Mirabel. Hello. Mirabel. Hello. And Sorvia. Hello. Sorvia. Hi. You are the owners of this establishment. Pleasure My friends, who who have you met? Who who have you who, you who you came with uh, with our uh, family members, eh? With the Vistani. Indeed, I have. And with whom did you travel? Chuck can't remember his name, but with Tinsveta, <laughs> it's been less than a day. Uh huh. And the only name you actually got uh, was uh, that's the, really sticking out to you is Madame Ava. Madame Ava. Oh, you've met the madam. I see. Yes. And they guided you through the gates, I take it. Of course. Well... Unfortunately, I will. We will not be inviting you to this game, as I think it is about time for us to retire as well. But perhaps if you stick around, um, what was your name? Tensveta, you said. I don't believe I actually introduced myself, but yes. I May thought you did. I thought, I thought you said it. That's that's me, not them. Mm -hmm. What was your name? Tensveta, but you may call me Tens. Tens, it is great to meet you. Uh, perhaps if you are staying in town a few nights, we could uh, we could figure something out. Uh, DM, how are they dressed? Are they are they uh, in similar dress to everybody else around here? Are they a little bit nicer dressed, or are they? Uh, well, make a make a perception check. Okay. The look that he gave made me suspicious. With a natural twenty for twenty five. So they are well. The the clothes are. I, I I don't know. I they would you would consider them nicer. Okay. They are that vibrant, colorful, hand woven, um, but sort of at the same time kind of patchy and. Uh, so yeah, I, compared to where you come from, I don't know if you would consider them nice compared to the very drab clo and and almost colorless clothing of the Barovians. They are vibrant and they they look significantly more well off. Okay, but are they wealthy? It does, you know they don't. That's not what you. Yeah, that's not, not my goal. Kind of yeah, yeah. That's not my goal. Uh, he'll just say yeah, very well. Uh, I hope that we can have a game uh tomorrow, uh, or perhaps a dinner, something to that effect. Uh, of course. We'll see what we can do. I saw you um, are a wealthy man, so I'm mm -hmm. sure we can, uh, my sisters and I can oblige and perhaps take some of that, more of that coin off your hands. Oh, we'll see about that. She gives you a sort of sly smile. And with that, we will retire for the evening. So Good evening. I hope all of you enjoy. Please do not uh, let Ismark uh, rile you up too much with his fairy tales, okay? We won't. No worries here. And he'll. So go back is, um, the Count is. He's a powerful man. Powerful men. It's for jealousy. They make weaker men feeble, they tell tales. Hmm. Anyways. Have a great night, and the three of them stand up and make their way somewhere, somewhere off past past the kitchen and behind the uh, the bar. Mm 
before they disappear into the dark. He'll uh, saddle up back next to Ash and the ground for the other guys. Well, that was enlightening. We must be careful with the Vistani. They are spies for Strad. They are his servants. Yes. Ash is going to look over at the other guy that's sitting there and go, what's your take on all this? You've been awful quiet since we sat down. Uh, the barkeep at that point comes back over with your hot food, um, which is a very poorly put together, uh, look like looks like a little too re, like reheated meat pies that are a little burned and puts them down for each of you. What, what, what was that you said? I, I didn't hear, he, you know, but his mark here is always telling stories about uh, the count and is he a counter yeah, I don't prince? know what's true or not. Because I've heard both at this point. What? Is he a count or a prince? I've heard both. Well, I don't, I don't really know the difference. Fair. He's just going to indulge himself in the wine and food. He is a devil. That is what he is. They are many... devil princes. How many so, people share your sentiment? Well, there are many. Many. Many men such as yourselves who have come through, who have tried to fight against Strahd, who have faced him in this castle. None have stood. All have fallen. The villagers, the peasantry, we rise up, we are we are crushed and brought back down. Prisoners here to this devil. So if you guys try rising up all the time, who helps them fight? Because I don't care how powerful you are if you got a whole bunch of people going after you. Takes another... Big swig of his wine before putting the empty cup back in front of our Arik. Another. Surad commands the darkness itself in Barovia. All manner of creature come to his aid. And what's stopping us from just going to Strahd now and telling them that you're down here telling all these stories? Well, if you wish to walk into your own death, I'm sure he's more interested than you. He cares nothing for me. I think he tortures me. He wants to see me slowly watch as Arena turns before my eyes. It is the kind of man he is. Go ask the priest if you don't believe me. I believe you. I appreciate that. <laughs> and if I you was will less see for yourself in time. And if I was less believing, where's this priest at? And who does he worship? Well, the old church is on the hill, just to the north of town. Uh, it was a Church to Paylor at one point, but he does uh, does not see much worship these days. All right. And I'm willing to help you out. I like to see safe places for people. Excellent. You do not know what this means to me. 
my sister is is all that matters in this. But I, I, I will tell you, Strahd will hunt her to the ends of the earth, so we you will be putting yourselves in danger if you assist me with this. Is there a specific place that you're intending to take your sister in Velaki or Velikai, however you say it? Uh, we have some friends there, the Burgomeister of the town. He's also not a loyal servant of Strahd, as uh, some may think. Did you say the Burgomeister? Correct. That's a word. Uh, have you not you're not familiar with this term? No. Uh, this is um it manages the town, the law, the keeper, the um how you would what you would call a tax collector? Um no, more than that, but uh <clears throat> like a mayor of sorts. Hmm. He's going to take the pastry that he got off the carton and start eating it. Okay. Quickly, he um, changes his mind. Jeez. Mm. Enjoy death. <laughs> Make a constitution saving throw. Oh, I accidentally rolled it with advantage. Uh, the first one was an eight plus one nine. Eight plus one for a nine. Okay. Uh, it looks and tastes very much like a mincemeat pie. Uh, it is a little. It is like sweet and savory. The pastry dough is is sweet, um, and something. Uh, and the and the meat is tender. We'll say. Um, so it goes down easy and it's actually, it's actually quite good for, you know, especially compared to the uh, one that I just, food that was just handed to you. Yeah. 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 <laughs> um, okay. Noted. Roll a one D four. Oh boy. Mm. How about a two? What does a two get me, Bob? So as all, so as all of you begin to. He continued to drink and talk to Ismark about his plans to rescue Arena. Tens, your your vision starts to blur a bit. Your head gets light. And you're not, you know, elves don't typically sleep, right? You 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 go into a trance, this this dreamlike state. For several hours and when you are resting and your mind starts to go to that place you see visions of the Feywild and home and this beautiful field of flowers and dancing creatures and it is and it's beautiful and it's joyous and it's wondrous as you're taken into this absolutely lucid vivid and joyous dream he's gonna switch over to spring in the middle of it the rest of you watch as tens passes out completely unconscious at the at the bar <laughs> his head bangs against the you know slips and bangs against the the bar and he is sound asleep they were there filled with Adivan. man i could use some of those <laughs> and as you watch <laughs> As he just collapses there, Idiot. all of you sort of look down at the pies and look over at him, and that's where we'll pick up next week. Oh shit! Wait. <laughs> Good job. I, I, I hey, we at least get you back to the room, Jesus. I know, right? <laughs> hey, at least they're paid for for the night. Uh, thank you guys so much. Uh, please make sure you use your elf eggs in the chat to uh, take part in our dice giveaway this month for our Quailing Kazoo themed dice from our Tuesday night games. Uh, I'm actually not certain if we will have another live episode next week. I, I am I am going away uh, for several days towards the end of this week, and I'm not certain if I'll be back in time or not. If not, we will we'll do another rerun. But I promise after that we will we'll go pretty strong through the holiday. 
uh, I think, uh, of course, thank you to our sponsor, CD Foundry, uh, Tabletop Audio, Dragon Knight Dice, and, you know, big, big, big shout out to our newest sponsor, our official sponsor, Forge, forge-vtt.com. If you guys are looking to play your own tabletop role-playing games the same way we do and make friends all across the globe, you want to run games as smoothly or maybe smoother than, than we managed to, <laughs> make sure you check out Forge. They are incredibly affordable and significantly cheaper than any other virtual tabletop system where you'd be doing the same thing. If you compare what you get with Forge at that $11.66 to a Roll20 or even D&D Beyond or any of those others, it is significantly cheaper. And to be honest, you can import all your stuff from D&D Beyond super easy. It is, it's a really, really great system. So make sure you check those guys out if you're looking to, you know, do what we do. So with that, I think we got a Steam game, a Steam game to give away. Uh, yeah, and we only had one entrance. So by default, uh, Souls Rolls. <laughs> oh, that's easy. <laughs> you get yourself a Steam game, buddy. Roll it, dang it. No. There's 22 oh. people in chat. We had one entry. One end. Well, everyone was. I think everyone's saving their their uh, eggs for the eggs dice for giveaways. the dice. They Those just dice want the dice. Gorgeous. Man, you know some of these games are worth uh, are worth a pretty penny. It's true. Nope, just dice. But, you know, <laughs> you do people your, know what they do want. What you want? <laughs> you give the people a, let them eat cake. <laughs> pastries. Let them eat dream pastries. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, Soul Well, congratulations. Let us know how that game is. Deployment, not that you have time to play games. Oh, Doggos is saying he thought he marked entered. Uh, oh, Mark entered. Mark doesn't Mark doesn't win any dice. <laughs> Mark doesn't win any games. Mark works for me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Mark is the dice. So he doesn't, he can't, well, you know, I can't give him his freedom. Uh, all right. Well, congratulations, souls. All right. So uh, I don't remember who rolled the last time. Uh, so I let's think just I go to, all right, let's go to Chuck. Chuck, go ahead and roll us a d20. Nine. Nine. All right. Nine. All right. Well, let's go. To? Let's go do some raiding. Let's uh, make some friends. Be loud. Raiding. We'll see you guys uh, tomorrow. Tuesday, maybe Thursday. Oh, Tomorrow. definitely Monday. Yeah. <laughs> How did I forget that all night? I don't. I don't know. <laughs> Why didn't you stop me? I don't know. I didn't. It's just letting you do your thing, man. What do you want? I'm just me? so used to it. Yeah. No. A sinner's dream tomorrow. Uh -huh. So uh -huh. yeah, Chuck. Chuck is DMing, uh, and uh, myself and Trevor and uh, a bunch of other uh, really really great guys are in uh, our 1940s theme noir setting so if you want to see a very different version of dungeons and dragons than you've ever seen before uh, come hang out for that one because it's a really really good group of role players playing you know classic <laughs> style noir detectives yeah yeah, yeah classic dicks yeah and it's very <laughs> classic dicks. Um, but it's it's a lot of fun and we are super excited to have it on our channel i can't i literally that's like all we worked on all day so i don't know i don't know how i forgot it maybe i was just burnt out on it maybe <laughs> Maybe. Just don't be burned out tomorrow. Wait, you're blowing up tomorrow, but that's beside the point. <laughs> anyway, let's break. Yeah, nothing. Yeah. Well, you're, just, you're, literally, yeah, you're literally starting us off with a bang. Yeah. Um, all right, guys. Uh, we will see you uh, next week. <laughs>